Sir, absolutely, as an existing community. I mean, we have some right to our rights as a community. We have divided the community from us. And if we're continuing this, I will tell you what's going to happen. <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now 
and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria in Excelsior. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, and praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O God, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot, in safety, continue without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, for a reading of our lesson. Thus says the Lord, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 145, uh, verses 8 and 9, and 15 through 22. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. The Lord upholds all those who fall, he lifts up, lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. To all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The 
Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading to the letter to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. Psalm 145, verses 16 and 17. Several years ago, my husband Alan and I visited his parents in Tennessee, and we ate lunch at the One Acre Cafe, which is a pay-what-you-can restaurant in Johnson City. It's part of a network of cafes and restaurants that have opened to address hunger in communities across America. The One Acre Cafe is located in part of the city where there are many homeless persons and low-income housing. The cafe is open five days a week from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Each day features a new menu. The suggested prices were $5 for a small plate, seven for a medium plate, and 10 for a large plate. Or 
You could simply pay what you could or not pay at all. Anyone can get a free meal if they were willing to volunteer and help by working in the kitchen, as servers, with cleanup, or in other ways. Thousands of meals have been served. Many folks who come will pay it forward by paying for their own meal and donating money to pay for someone who can't pay. And any tips that are given go directly to the cafe, which is a nonprofit. And the manager and all the workers are volunteers. There are no paid employees. All of the food and other items have been donated from farmers, from people's backyard gardens, from community gardens, from bread companies, and many businesses have donated furniture, dishes, and many other supplies. If the cafe had extra food, they would pass it along to help others. For example, if they had five 25 pound bags of potatoes, they would make potato soup, but then all of the leftover potatoes, they would donate to the local homeless shelter. This cafe has a large community table where strangers can sit together and have lunch and become friends. If a homeless person arrives, volunteers will visit with them and discreetly offer to give them a backpack that is filled with personal care items. Local churches donate the items for the backpacks and stores have donated the backpacks. Many elderly poor in the neighborhood also come. Some come for lunch and others come just in search of companionship for somebody to sit with and talk. Everyone is welcomed by all the volunteers. They sit with the guests. They listen with open and compassionate hearts and they respect the dignity of every person there's a similar cafe in, in Danville, Kentucky, called Grace Cafe, and it operates under the same principle. As I think about the One Acre Cafe and Grace Cafe and others like it across the nation, I'm reminded of Jesus' story of the miracle of feeding 5,000. Miracle stories were popular in the ancient world within Christianity and beyond. Telling and retelling the stories of Jesus' miracles was an important way in which his followers remembered and honored him. But it was also an important way in which they could share with others the good news of the gospel. The feeding of 5,000 is the only miracle that is recorded in all four gospels. So clearly, something very important is going on in this story. We appreciate the importance of the story when we pay attention to the differences in the response between Jesus and his disciples. The disciples had pleaded with Jesus. It was getting dark and the crowd was huge. Shouldn't everybody be told to go home to their villages? Shouldn't people be told that they have to be responsible for themselves? Surely they can find food on their own in the nearby villages. Doesn't Jesus understand? There's a crowd of 5,000 men. That's not even counting the women and children. And the needs are overwhelming. Notice how Jesus responds. He explained that the people need not go away. And he told his disciples, you get them something to eat. The word you is emphatic in the Greek. In other words, Jesus was saying to the disciples, you need to help. You need to be part of the solution. The volunteers who provide the free lunches at the One Acre Cafe in Johnson City and Grace Cafe in Danville could have responded like the disciples. They could have said, there are just too many homeless people. 
we can't feed them all. We don't have enough food. We don't have enough volunteers. We're just too busy. But instead, the volunteers responded just like the young boy in Jesus' story. They dug into their pockets and offered whatever they could. It may not be a lot of food. It may not be the best food. It may not be a lot of time. But when all that food is gathered up and all that volunteer time is added up, when churches collaborate in helping, when local businesses help, miracles happen. Hungry people are fed. Sad and lonely people had someone who will take time to hear their story, to respect their dignity. And people who feel lost and alone and marginalized feel loved and their dignity is respected. The, dis the disciples failed to see the abundant possibilities. They were blinded by limitations that only existed in their own minds and hearts. We can sense their fear and uncertainty when they pleaded with Jesus saying, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. The disciples focused on what they didn't have rather than on what they did have. Because they were fixated on limitations they fail to imagine the possibilities. In our current environment with the COVID pandemic and the steadily increasing number of people losing their jobs and the risk of being evicted and becoming homeless, hunger in our community will continue to grow. The ministry of our garden for the hungry in our parish could not be more important as we are able to donate fresh, nutritious vegetables to the food pantries in Richmond and Berea and to food ministries at St. Thomas Lutheran Church and St. Philip's AME Church in Richmond. Our members are also providing free lunches for homeless persons in downtown Richmond one day a week. Other churches and faith communities are providing lunches for the other six days of the week. The combined generosity and volunteer time of all of these people are ensuring that people will not be hungry in our community. Our church has received a grant that will allow us to continue to provide food to homeless and hungry persons in our community. The lessons that we learned from Jesus' story of the feeding of the 5,000 and the examples of the incredible food ministries of dedicated Christians and others in our community and communities across our nation demonstrate that miracles can happen. When we work together with others, with God's help, miracles happen. Lives are transformed. Grace happens. When we're gripped by fear of scarcity, will be wise to remember today's gospel. When we're feeling overwhelmed by the needs of so many others, we'll be wise to remember that God knows no limitation. The economy of the kingdom of God is abundant and knows no scarcity. God can and will always work with our humble offering. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, expand our minds and hearts that we may respond to the needs of others with abundant generosity, compassion, and love in order that we may meet the needs of others and that they may know your steadfast love and mercy and no one is left hungry and alone in your kingdom. Amen.
Let us say together our statement of faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now for our prayers of the people. The prayers of the people form. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Michael and Mark, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people praying for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people, pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Please offer your own prayers and interse of intercession and thanksgiving. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you 
in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of power and, and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we've fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, 
You, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts, sanctify them by the Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, when we are unable to receive the Holy Sacrament in person, we pray. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ, proclaim your resurrection, and await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 690, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
my brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.